first century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone, let's celebrate. We are the children of the sun. I can see you when I look into your eyes. We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one. And we can make a difference. Hi there, I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. This is our 21st Century Superhuman show. Today we're going to talk about Disclosure 2020 with Judy Jandora. Judy, how are you today? I am doing really, really good today. Thank you, Carrie. It's nice to be here with you. Um, it's been quite a while since I've done anything like this, and I'm really happy to be in here in your presence to uh, explore. It's good to have you here with me, and I know you've been kind of on a little bit of a hiatus and an internal journey, and a few years ago, you were part of the One People's Movement, which traveled across the country speaking about sovereignty, and then you ended up in Morocco with a team that was working on a free energy device, and you are also a great tarot reader and very intuitive, I'd call you psychic, basically, and... Um, so you're one of my really dear friends. I, I love knowing you and your insights are always very astute. And so today we're going to discuss some of the things that are going on right now in the revealing of our world as we live in what the ancients called the shift of the ages. Hmm right? <laughs> I got chills when you said that. Uh, my yeah. mom is still doing it. I'm like, Me oh, all lit up. Yeah, and this is an amazing time, and we are in a great transformation. We're in a great transformation in ourselves. We're in a great transformation in the world that's going on around us, and we are on a journey to birthing a new earth, a new humanity, a new level of our existence here. So it's very exciting, actually. It really, really is. Um, you know, I think you and I and, and so many of our uh, friends all over the planet um, have been tapped into this energy knowing that it was coming, it was unfolding, it was like this big ball of information that's been stretched out over so much time with all these different little events. Um, but it feels like we are like in the midst of the birthing now. Um, Finally, <laughs> um, and it's a very interesting time, and I'm I'm excited to to see what comes of this conversation um, because there's so much information out there, and I've been glued to it in a billion different ways, mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. But yeah, this is a, an amazing time to be yeah. alive. Beautifully said. I'm not actually sure where this image behind me came from. I pulled it off of Facebook, off of something that I'm going to read right now. I, okay. got, I just got this beautiful reading this morning that um, someone posted in my kind of my Facebook comings and goings. And I'd like to read it because I feel like it's really a nice introduction to what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. That sounds good. I know you had some really big hits last week on the children and what's happening with that and how it affects, how it's connected with us, the inside of us. So let's just read this and um, I'll be, um, I'll just take a couple of minutes and read it. It is by Ramona Lappin, who I don't really know, but um, it's really beautiful and well said about this current time. It's called Disclosure. Over the next few days and weeks, we will be exposed to a lot of information coming through regarding the disclosure of the very dark agendas that have been playing out on this planet for a very long time. And what I would like to interject here is dark agendas, according to my thought and 21st century superhuman quantum lifestyle concepts, dark agendas cannot exist unless we have chosen to live outside of love and thus we means us, the collective, we means all of humanity. And so this, unless, unless we are 
in our creatorship outside of love, these things can't even exist. So we're in a return to <coughs> knowing our connection to love. Excuse me, Get a little choke there. So breathing, smiling, and loving helps reset our neurobiology in the midst of all of this. It is important to remember what has been playing out on this planet for a very long, oops, it is important to remember that what is to transpire will be a shock to many, but that it concerns us all. Disclosure is not just for the masses, it concerns every one of us. We will discover greater truths, all of us. None of us knows it all, and we will all be affected by the process of disclosure to some degree or another. It is also important to remember that we all occupy our own realities to a certain extent. So what is our truth isn't necessarily that which everyone else is experiencing. Some will fall into denial. Let us hold space for everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, got that little frog in there. Those of us that have already familiarized themselves with the topics at hand, such as the ritual, satanic abuse, and consummation of children and people, are positioned and have been prepared to be the energetic balancers for the collective energies about to unleash. Some of us have already been prepared and transmuted to a large degree, have prepared and transmuted to a large degree what most of the collective will feel such as shock, fear, anger, grief, and horror. It is important for those of us who have been prepared for those revelatory times to stay as balanced as we can in order to hold space for the collective at large to make it through this transitional, shockingly, fear-inducing, and transformative period as easily and gracefully as possible. All are being red-pilled, as in the matrix, ready or not. Due to the accelerated clearings that have been ongoing energetically, especially over the last few months, we are now at a stage where these clearings of negative energies and entities is becoming manifest in our physical experience or realities. Part of this is also the lifting of veils, which is accelerating a greater speed of linear time. Greater truths are being unveiled, and this will accelerate now immensely for all to see how much corruption, deceit, abuse, control, and manipulation we have been subjected to, and I'm going to add in there, in a world that has been focused outside of love. This will come for many as a deep shock, and even those of us who have been seeing beyond the veils of illusion for some time will still have moments of deeper shock to transcend as the truth is more surreal and shocking than any Hollywood movie may try to portray. Truth is certainly stranger than fiction. Staying in neutrality as best we can during these trying times, as well as in non-judgment and dropping ever deeper into our hearts and unification with all is what will serve us well and help us keep the balance and transcendence of polarities playing out for everyone. When we can see from the eye of the creator, God's source, where everything simply is as it is, it is what transcends these old realities for good that we don't want to participate in any longer in the victim-victimizer programming, which has kept us trapped in these lower realities playing out and trying to keep us looping there. Let us not be divided and conquered, which is another agenda playing out. We don't participate in the separation between us and anyone any longer. Understanding that at the highest level, all are truly one and that everyone is playing their role in the unraveling of the experience of learning through polarity consciousness. Let us remember that this is the time of resolution and that all we are learning now is to live once again by the law of the one where what we do upon another is what we ultimately do upon ourselves. Every action has a reaction. Every cause has an effect. This is a universal law. So we are all learning what true unity consciousness truly means and how to discern between right and wrong. We understand that discernment and boundaries are absolutely key. If we don't acquire these tools of discernment, we would simply have to keep repeating the lessons we are supposed to learn over and over again until we do. 
And I truly believe we have had a large part transcended these lessons or we wouldn't be in the times we are in now where all is truly changing for the better, even if most of those positive changes aren't visible yet. The best way we can truly support disclosure is stepping into our own true power and true beingness, which is magical, powerful, and activating our true potential, gifts, and abilities beyond human comprehension through being as authentic and truthful in who we are at our core. Whatever we are seeking in the world is to see more, to see more of is what we are being asked to be more and bring more of. So whenever we recognize and wish for there to be more of, such as more gentleness in this world, more acceptance, more compassion, understanding, forgiveness, love, and so much more. We are asked to be that. Let us truly be the change and the way we wish to see it in the world. We add those attributes and qualities we see that are lacking in this world. This is how each one of us can create change and higher realities. The most beautiful as well as challenging times are lying ahead of us and are already happening. In truth, it has already happened at an energetic level, and time happens simultaneously. It's parallel. As such, there is no past, no future. All is accessible in this now, where we can merge and transcend timelines and quantum jump into much higher realities than our minds deem possible. Let us embrace every moment feeling sensation revelation the best we can with as much grace as we can muster even if we don't always remain balanced let us come back to the inner peace that cannot be taken away as quickly as we possibly can whilst also acknowledging and transmuting all that comes up to be transcended we keep transmuting we keep transcending we keep neutralizing we keep balancing all that arises we keep visualizing all that we wish to see in this world how we um, let us not resist, deny, or look away from anything we would rather not know to be true, for we have to face the collective shadow for it to be purged and transmuted. Let us see the world as it is without judging it for it to transform. Let us embrace our individuality whilst knowing and feeling our oneness with all that is. Let us love everyone unconditionally for who they are without us trying to change them and forgive those that by all means don't deserve forgiveness in the eyes of men as we are the change we've been waiting for and radical neutrality dissolves all lower realities for only when we become one with all can we overcome all. Let us merge and integrate all polarities within and without for them to collapse the old shall be washed away whilst the new is arising, for so it is. And again, by Ramona Lappin. Wow. <laughs> it's as if she's been in my mind and in my, in my room while I'm talking too. to people over the last several days, the last yes. couple of weeks. Oh my goodness. Well, I think the show's over. <laughs> I know. <huh? laughs> that was incredible. That it, it touches on everything that um, I wanted, to, almost everything that I wanted to talk about today, um, and that I know that we're kind of ready to vocalize and and share. Yes, that was fabulous. Thank you. Wow, mm -hmm. and thank you, Ramona Lappin. I know I've heard of her before. I just don't know exactly where, but that was brilliant. Beautifully right. Done. Yes. I, I think that essence that all things are happening concurrently, there is no time, we're in parallel timelines, it's already done, the shadow is needing to be revealed, um, and in order for the shadow to be revealed, that is how we dissolve it, that which is of the darkness will disintegrate is what I say, as we immerse ourselves in love and we immerse ourselves in the joy that is in us as your show has been was called the enjoy show i love that yeah. when you were had that on um you were doing Thank podcasts you. right yeah yeah that was yeah. really cool um so yeah go ahead judy so yeah i mean so many things um just so much of this what what comes to mind initially is something that i've been shown I, i'm constantly be, being um getting these clarities or downloads or whatever you want to call them. And it's, it's almost all day long, especially when I'm in conversation 
with someone, which I am most of the time all day long. Um, but one of the things that we were talking about time, and one of the things that I've been shown is that that you know it's like a, a sphere of experience and this whole thing that we're in is a sphere of experience but to be in physical uh, in the physical I think is also synonymous with being in duality and uh, those two things are really interesting both of which I'd like to really explore some more but the uh, the physical thing of time it's like it's you have to stretch it out and and be able to walk around in it and have all of the experiences otherwise it's just a concept I like as that. We, yeah as we move into this because we are we are in these avatars in this thing we think of as physical um, and everything about it is so perfectly done that it all of our senses believe it is um, but to have all of the experience this experiences viscerally which is what what um, implant them into the memory of all that we are that is it needs to be drawn out and some big events to really get all of this done. We thought it was gonna be you know, 2012 or something like this, but 2012 to now, that whole thing has just been stretched out so that we can really get each one of these little things so that we can feed this back, each one of our experiences, which is unique, um, back to the one that we all are. You know, It's like all the cells in our bodies are having a unique experience, but they're one body. You know, and, and so are we, as above, so below, as within, so without. Um, love that. <laughs> um, and for me, the whole play of duality, um, it really is like a play. It's a movie. You're watching yes. a movie, but mm -hmm. you're also in it and you're the one out here who created it and you're the director and, and you're all of it we're all of it and what i love and i had this conversation with someone last night too it's um and i've seen this i've seen this from really early on before my big stretch out from you know probably 17 years ago uh i remember seeing this very clearly that once the, once the the movie is over, we've completed this whole scene or this big part of the play, uh, and the uh, the re the curtains open and we all come out as the actors and directors and all that. We all come out and we take our bow, and then what do we do next? We go to the after party, <laughs> and there's no <laughs> character in that play that isn't loved, appreciated, and honored for the role that they played. I love that. Yeah, that's so, right. And, and again, when we want to call it team dark or somebody's doing something bad or evil, we are really not to hate or exactly. not love or be angry at. But there is that shock that comes up when we begin realizing some of the shadows that have existed. Well, I think we're meant to have that experience. I yes. really do. I, you know, it's, it's easier. It's, sometimes it's easy to see the outside view when you can lift yourself out of, you know, the forest for the trees kind of thing. But we're meant to be in the forest, experiencing yes. every tree and all of the scary creatures that come out and all of the pretty plants and all of that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and and that's okay. I think that's why we're here. I think we're we we created this so that we could have this experience, and so we're in the midst of it now, and we're in the midst of you know, like the, the big crescendo part of it, you yes, know, at least that's what it are. seems like to me. And we're so, well, how cool to be here in bodies at this time. How exciting. I know, right? And we may complain about the stresses and the challenges and everything that's going on, but um, what an exciting time to be here. And I think everyone who's here also volunteered to be here. You know, we're Absolutely. not here by accident. We're here by choice. And so it's to immerse ourselves in that choice that we made, to breathe and smile, love and laugh, and um, lighten ourselves so that we can be here in it in a joyful way in, 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 and embrace this experience. Well, and I loved what she said, and this is, again, something that I just had so much of what she said I had conversations about specifically last night which is amazing, of course, how perfect nothing is a, by accident or, um, yeah. Uh, but that was about neutrality. And I was explaining that um, 
how I feel about what's going on is, is, you know, while we've got these dastardly characters playing these just incomprehensible roles um, and, you know, all this information coming in about how, oh my God, if we just make the wrong move, the whole thing could go down and, you know, it's all over and bad guys won. But then we got the good guys over here and just watch what's going on here. But for me, it's, it's, um, it's taken me a long time, admittedly so, to get to a place where I can look at all of the things going on, all that I'm being brought to, which is a lot, um, and stay in a state of neutrality about it. Where, now I'm not saying I'm always there, there are times when something really, it, it triggers um, something inside of me that gets fearful, a little bit fearful here, or gets really happy over here, which is fine, but um, that's part of being here, you know? It's, it's finding that balance, it's like this bringing it, Closer, and then you know, having the experience of, of of pain and joy and fear and happiness and love and hate and all of that, you know, I remember hearing something that really, really, really settled in with me that I think is going to probably be hard for other people to some other people to understand, and is that there is no good or bad here. This is all about experiences. We are here on an adventure. We came into, it's like diving into um, the underwater and, and, and searching, you know, with your goggles and your mask and breathing apparatus or whatever. And, and how boring would it be if not much happened or right. if it was all just, you know, gray and white or whatever? I actually think I could live in a happy world. However, <laughs> You well, know, I we, think you do. Yes. I think we all do outside of this. I think this is this is a this is just a small portion, a tiny, tiny blink of yes. an eye portion of, of creation. We already know what it's like and we live in in what it's like to be outside of duality, which is that openness, that beauty, being able to create whatever you want. So if that's what our normal state is, then wouldn't it be amazing to experiment and see what it's like to not be that? So that even the appreciation of that is is raised so much more. True, 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 true. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Um, uh, I kind of lost it, but yeah, you're right. Um, Though the play of duality, you know, it's 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 just a little adventure that we created for. I think so, anyway. Yes. Oh, what I know what I was going like to say. I, I was going to bring up just how programmed we are by the old religious ideas that someone is evil, you know, or if you're bad, you're evil, and then you're going to burn in hell or you're going to be punished. I think it reminds me of old, George Bush saying you're either with us or against us kind of stuff. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's the old crime and punishment, fear and punishment. Um, and yet to look at it all and go, it's all experience and there isn't really punishment at the end of this. There's, someone being able to see what that experience brought them and maybe make new choices. Um, yeah. 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 You know, and, and when you start realizing that death isn't death, that's and right. And that it's literally waking back up to where you were before. <laughs> that's most a of the time. big one. Yeah. And, and I think once we start getting that, um, and I think a lot of this fear of the, the virus, you know, is basically people's fear of death. Like, oh my gosh, what sure. if I get sick? Oh my gosh, what if I die? Oh my gosh. And, and it's really another kind of made up scenario that we're in the middle of. And, right. um, but it's that, it's that fear of death and it's kind of the media playing with that, that it gets people, has gotten people to just not even listen to their their cognitive thinking and to just shut everything down. And maybe what it's doing is it's, it's highlighting for people who have been programmed to give their power away to, yes. um, to take somebody else's word for their truth, doctors, yes. lawyers, you know, TV news broadcasters, stars, um, you know, we, I could go on and on and on. Um, True. That's been a, that's been a, we're, we're going to go back down into the 3D for a little while here. <laughs> right, but exactly what you're saying, these things have to surface. And in yes. order for them to surface, sometimes it takes pressure for them to surface until exactly. pressure is being put on us. 
we can't see what we're kind of holding on to on the inside. Absolutely. I wonder if you would be okay if I read this little thing that uh, I posted on my Facebook page um, sure. yesterday because it fits right in here. Okay. And okay. I love it. And it's called Struggle. Okay. And let me see which glasses I. Oh need. yeah, I think I, I think <laughs> I, I think I remember this. <laughs> yeah, a man found a cocoon of an emperor moth. He took it home so that he could watch the moth come out of the cocoon. On that day, a small opening appeared. He sat and watched the moth for several hours as the moth struggled to force the body through that little hole. Then it seemed to stop making any progress. It appeared as if it had gotten as far as it could get and it could get no further. It seemed to be stuck. Then the man, in his kindness, decided to help the moth. So he took a pair of scissors and snipped off the remaining bit of the cocoon. The moth then emerged easily, but it had, it had a swollen body and small shriveled wings. The man continued to watch the moth, but he, um, because he expected that at any moment, the wings would enlarge and expand to be able to support the body which would um, contract in time. Neither happened. In fact, the little moth spent the rest of his life crawling around with a swollen body and sh uh, swollen body and shriveled body and shriveled wings. It never was able to fly. What the man in his kindness and haste did not understand was that the, restrict, uh, the restricting cocoon and the struggle required for the moth to get through the tiny opening was the way of forcing fluid from the body of the moth into the wings so that it would be ready for flight once it achieved its freedom from the cocoon. Freedom and flight would only come after the struggle. By depriving the moth of a struggle, he deprived the moth of health. Sometimes struggles are expected exactly what we need in our lives. If we were to go through our life without any obstacles, we would be crippled. We would not be as strong as we could have been. Give every opportunity a chance. Yes, that is really a great story. And it's amazing. It kind of fits right in with what we were just saying and what we're here to experience, you know, the people who, people who don't have struggles. That's why so many people that I work with, you know, I, I, I work with people to kind of deprogram and then choose the program they want, you mm -hmm. know, which is usually um, being kind and gentle to yourself and, and um, creating the thoughts that you do want, that kind of thing. So many people are like, oh, but I had it so rough. And I'm like, well, let's take a look at that. Let's see where the jewels are in there. Because I guarantee you those jewels are the ones that have created your treasure right now. And we've got to take a look at that. Because when you can look, when you can go back to something that was really difficult in your life, and see where it actually gave you something that has helped you along the way, then you can change the way you think about your life. You know, instead of being the victim, you're now the victor, you know, typical words, but, but they're powerful. That's beautiful, Judy. Yeah, that's really, really nice. Um, let's take a look a second. Again, let's come back to that we are in this great shift of the ages. And I know this yes. is what brought up our initial conversation that prompted this show. Um, and in the shift of the ages, we have a lot of transformation that's taking place. And there's many people, I think millions around the world now are aware of these shifts where people often ask me, well, are we going to make it, you know? And what I say about, yes, we're going to make it is we've just come through a 26,000 year cycle of darkness. And now we've come up into equal with Atlantis. We've come up into a 26,000 year cycle of light. If, the, if years exist, but anyway, to look at it, yes, we're going into this cycle of light. And part of what's going on right now is this dissonance. It's where when the tide changes in the ocean and the waves are turbulent at the shore where that tide change is taking place. And in that turbulence, it feels like things are breaking down but they're not really breaking down, they're changing form. And us learning to ride this wave, to ride this tide, to ride into this new way of being. And we'll, I'll just list five things that are kind of part of this 
this shift that's going on, we're living in an old matrix system that in some ways has been kind of broken. It hasn't really been serving the good of the many. It's only been serving ultimately the good of the few. And there's been those few at the top of corporations, 147 corporations running the world, and this pulling resources up to the top. Um, so we're, so our, our, our old currency system has not been working well. It has not been serving the many. It's only been serving the few. So we're looking at a global currency reset being in the process of taking place, new forms taking place. And we don't even probably fully know what those are yet, but we're watching this change percolating behind the scenes and getting ready to rise up. Um, yeah, Trump actually now has control of the Federal Reserve completely. Yes, I love that. I've seen those news, those like, those that was quiet last news broadcasts. Yay. Yeah. So yeah. the the Treasury and the Fed have now been combined. I don't want to go off into that because that's a whole topic in and of yeah, yeah, itself. Yeah, but, but we yeah. are in the midst of a global currency kind of reset taking place. We're also in the midst of health remedies rising that are really beneficial rather than designed to just keep people sick and addicted to them for their lifetimes. And so there's much science behind the scenes of how do we really get well and stay well and be well quickly and to know that we're well. Um, advanced technologies, for instance, I've worked with as a student of the Keshe Technologies for quite a few years now, um, you've worked with free energy devices, and many of these things are coming forward around the planet, and also much hidden knowledge. Tesla's knowledge is all pretty much available, and um, I know Elon Musk kind of published all of his patents, and these things are available. We're about ready to go into a new phase of technology for humanity. The removal of lower vibrational beings. So we're going to say those who have been participating in this shadow government, shadow operation of humanity, disclosure is coming forward on that. And those are, there are massive arrests taking place. There are various things going on behind the scenes quietly um, in order to create this kind of change. And then also we have a lot of um, ET disclosure going on and potentially they are really here because we have so much energy coming into the planet right now. It's almost like we need help with moderating that. It's like some of them are advanced ahead of where we are and they're helping us navigate this change. And might they be another aspect of ourselves? They absolutely. Emerging. Yes. And, and I always just go, is there anything but me? Is there anything but me exactly. in the shadow? Is there anything but me in the change? Right. Um, exactly. And we always do have to ask that question. And I say our walk of mastery in this world is to breathe, smile, love, and laugh, and just become part of this flow because it is there's a lot of a lot of greater understanding of our existence taking place right now absolutely. absolutely so i know that i know that you are getting feelings about some of these different things that are going on and how how they're affecting us or how they are part of us do you want to look at some of well that? sure and and I'd like to kind of start off with um, a big download that I got in um, early January. It was January 6th, and I'll, it, it took me two hours to speak it out, but I'll, I can condense it into just a few minutes, I think, the basics of it. Uh, and what I saw, wide, eyes wide open, I could see the whole thing laying out in front of me. I'm talking to my two housemates, and I'm seeing this um, visual in front of me and what I saw was this round uh, flat plane of, of it, it looked like it was out in space um, like um, um, oh goodness what's that called <laughs> uh, anyway it's a realm and in the center of it was like a sun but the sun I could see in its essence was dark and light and it was spinning really 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 fast so it was more silver um, and it was shooting off energy in all directions so fast that you couldn't see it, of course, and, and, and moving back in. And then there was, there were, it was like a whole nother realm outside of it. But what I was shown initially was that this plasma ball is what I called it. 
is um, the center of a new realm that um, the light beings here, the people here, uh, with all of the work that we've done for all of this time, have been able to stabilize this new realm. And this new realm was stabilized mm. and, and ready for entry. And on the edges of it was what I saw is what I saw as um, a threshold. And then I was shown that this was 2020. That this threshold itself is 2020. And every day, every week, and every month, and the numbers within those, because it's all coding, um, will offer us opportunities as we move in. And it's almost like that sounds like it. we have to accept. And it was not even like that. It was like as, as we experience 2020 each day, each week, each month, um, that we move in, it's a natural thing. So each one of us is doing this naturally. And we will be, as we do this, our subconscious, everything that we've got in the subconscious. So it's kind of like, you know, seeing a, an iceberg and there's this much out and that much, you know, under. The under is the, uh, the subconscious. It's all the programming, probably for generation after generation. Uh, and all of that, that starts coming up. It starts being released, which is what we're seeing on the world stage right now, by the way. And as we move in and it gets released, it becomes easier and easier to move in and to see what's going on, to feel what's going on, and then to also uh, manifest uh, as these things are released. Then what I saw was the outside of this, where we've been is darkness. It, it looked like it looked like a night sky, really dark night sky. And you could see some, some stars, but there were these kind of, this is the funny part, was that there were these kind of um, round plasticky looking balls, some of them with different colors, blue and red, and they had um, little wires on them. So they were like electronic and they were all around the outside of this, um, this new realm. And what I was shown was that they were, they were, um, duality spheres of experience that we tapped in we had the opportunity to tap into i was shown that we each one of us would do it differently that we didn't have to do all of them but we could choose how many that we experienced and it once you tapped in it was a whole reality open up around you and you got to experience duality in a specific kind of way and um and then what i was shown after that was that so many of us have completed that circuit completed the duality circuit that we stabilized this plasma realm, this new plasma ball in this new realm, and now are ready to enter in 2020 is the entry into this. So that's the basic overview. Mm -hmm. um, um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I told a lot of people about it. Everybody's like, you gotta, you've got to write it down. You've got to talk about it. And I never did, but I well, am. Now, you know, so. it is, it's like the emerging of the new earth and the yeah. emerging of, out of the frequencies that we are choosing to operate in, we are really giving birth to a new realm that is now stabilizing. And I think there are yes, literally it's stabilized is what I got. I love it. And there's literally we just have to go through like a, it's it literally is like a, a washing machine that we're moving through. It's washing yes. out. It's bringing all of the, our subconscious because we can't move into that realm with the rules being the way they are there are so much freedom and everything we can't bring with us all that we you know that we've accumulated along the way in the exploration of duality right so this is our way of of releasing that so we're seeing what we're releasing um the the you know the the darkness and the light you know when you've got one you've got the other in duality and i would suggest too that given that that around the middle of this year moving forward, that will probably um, start shifting where the duality is now being released because this, this realm, this new realm was the emergence. So it wasn't that we actually uh, let go of the darkness. We, and this is what I teach too. It's like, you, you don't push it down. Those are the children that we push down. Our, 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 you know, what we tried to protect in ourselves all these years are these aspects of ourselves that when we got hurt when we were little and even as adults 
uh, we create a protection around it. And that protection becomes a prison for that aspect of ourselves that doesn't get healed. So that's all coming up. Now, that's where it comes into something that I saw very clearly last week, which was all these children that have been held down, uh, underground, misused, abused, um, the, the female aspects of humanity that have been held down and misused and abused right. all of this time. Those are aspects of ourselves that we push down and, and repressed. Mm -hmm. And those are all starting to come back up. So we're going to see that as well. Um, but when it comes to flipping that around and so many people will be um, triggered to want to hate on those who were the oppressors. But if you realize that we also act as the oppressors by not knowing how to do anything other, but then repress our, our pain and our fear and, and our anger, um, that as this comes up, um, we bring it all into wholeness instead of push it away or try to dissolve it or whatever. It becomes wholeness. Beautiful. That's how I see it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. I really like that. <laughs> Beautiful, Judy. You know, it's um, uh, just sharing visions that we've had. My, um, I was, one night I was, um, I don't know, I think I started talking in my sleep and my husband started talking me through kind of a QHHT session where he was asking me, well, where I was going and what I was doing. And, um, and I was actually coming and going from like a celestial city. And he asked me where it was. And I said, Ald Aldebaran. And Aldebaran is a star that's kind of to the right of Orion, and it's actually straight up over our heads every night, and which wow. I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know that about the star at the, you know, in my logical mind. I had to go look it up. And um, Very cool. But, yeah, I mean, I think we're all kind of doing various things in multidimensional levels at this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I know that I also work as a, a diffuser of sorts, um, um, a filter of sorts, because I've been able to feel things as they come up, especially if you several days ago when I felt these children being brought up. Uh, and then the next day I'm seeing it all over the place. People are also getting the same thing. That's another thing is once I get something, it's, and I'm not always the first one, obvious, obviously, but when I have these ahas, it shows up in my world around me, like really quickly. Um, but I could feel that and I could feel the, the, the medical workers, the people, the, the rescuers that were bringing them up and their, oh, their despair and their pain to see what they were seeing. And that was what I was actually... Um, Trans, transmuting, transforming um, so that it didn't go out any further. Um, I was able to bring that into the neutrality and, and then um, feel the love and, and right. you know, which is neutrality to me. Yes. Through neutrality. And it's interesting, um, this revealing of children that have been in prison different places and that are being brought forward. Um, when I was, it must have been, um, when I lived in Colorado and it had to be like, um, maybe 2010 or something like that. So 10 years ago, at least one of the things that I work with right now is star seeds. And I meet many young people who I call star seeds, who I feel have come in with advanced, already advanced brain function. They've come in to carry forward the new earth, the new way of being, rather than coming in to carry forward the old program, I'm gonna call it the old matrix program, which has kept us sort of running around to jobs we don't really like that much and um, serving on a level that kind of takes away from ourself in order to, now we're going this next step of discovering who we are, having the courage to express it. But these beautiful star seeds always seem to be in my life. And the next fifth book of 21st Century Superhuman that I'm working on is called Star Seeds Guide to Planet Earth. Working on it with very it. cool. Yeah. So, um, Yay. But, and, and this young woman worked with me at a ski shop like 10 years ago in Colorado, where I was snowboarding and mountain biking and running rivers and doing all these fun things. And um, 
she's a little tiny thing and she was very you just talked to her and you knew she jumped in here from somewhere else and she came and she talked to me one day cuz somehow these young star seeds always start talking to me and telling me about their lives and what's going on and my you know my natural inclination is to direct them to their own hearts and say yes your heart is guiding you truly but she said to me i keep having this recurring dream and it is of these children locked up in these houses and they're being tortured and hurt and I don't know what to do about it. And I mean, I'm just getting goosebumps completely up and down my body telling you about this. And at the time I said, you know, maybe you're going to become a rescuer of children. I mean, we hadn't had the disclosure yet that has told us that all of this is going on. But obviously she jumped in as a soul, as an advanced soul, already carrying this knowledge with her that this would be revealed and this would be something that she had to energetically, that she came in to energetically help with. So isn't that something? I mean, that I've been is thinking, amazing. as we've been hearing these stories of, you know, 3,000 children and 5,000 children being brought up from these underground um, areas that, and all of this disclosure and the underground areas are getting bombed and collapsed and cleaned yes. out and oh my gosh yes yes oh my gosh so much is happening all at once right now it's almost impossible to keep up with it it's like it's all remember the time now it feels like it's collapsing in this way yes it's very it's powerful beautiful. very powerful beautiful times and exciting and i don't even like to spend a lot of time dwelling on these things but i love that thing piece that i just read of it talking about the human shadow needs to be revealed light needs to be shed upon it and it as is we, yeah as we i think it that. is important to see it there for a long time i did not I, it was mm -hmm. not my job i was all about just inspiration and and you know bringing the the vibrational assisting to try to bring up the vibration of the planet through through my facebook and my connections and stuff like that and um and i think what it did was it allowed me to get to a place where i was um really comfortable in that and it was natural for me so that i didn't have to work at it so much of course and then once this came about i was really surprised at how my guidance was like, now go and figure it, go look at it all, look at all of it. Mm -hmm. I'd already been, you know, doing it in the background, but not in full force like I have been since this whole thing started up with the coronavirus. And it kind of surprised me. I was really surprised that that was, this was now my job to do this part, you know? And I know my, my system well enough to know, I know how my guidance system works that I, I don't even question it anymore. But, um, but to start putting this out so that other people see and there's a really good reason for that because i do think that once we see um this darkness well once we see the duality the the dark side of the duality um and we have that experience in whichever way we do which is completely unique to each person and unique to the moment in the day for each person um then we've had it and we don't need to ever re recreate it again. We know how not to, you know, it's, it's just part of the adventure. Right. Um, crazy as it is, but it is, you know, I just know that. So, you know, seeing all of this, like you're saying, um, is for many anyway, I wouldn't say for all, but for many, I think it's important to be able to do that and to kind of, feel yourself in a neutral state or allow yourself to try to find that balance? Well, you know, I, I think what it does for us is we do, like you said, need to go through that process of learning how to observe, see, absorb things and return to love inside of ourselves. I mean, that is really an art. That's Ooh. really the mastery. That's super and, powerful. Yeah. I mean, somebody stole something here the other night and I, um, from outside of our house and I had to go through, you know, being like feeling angry at that person, feeling hurt and then going, it's just a thing. And they're yeah. walking through their journey of, you know, in the darkness, in the shadow. And it's my job to teach myself how to stay in the light regarding everything. 
And so I guess if I didn't have contrast, would I be able to deepen my own experience? Or would you be able to, re to, to be able to step out of the experience eventually until you actually did have the contrast that you came in to have? That's right. So and I was going to say, the more I think, the more we deny that for ourselves and the more that we kind of, you know, veer around it, the bigger the contrast tends to get, or at least I see that in some people's lives. And I certainly experienced that a time or two with my own. Right. Judy, give, a, give me a little insight. We just have a few more minutes here. Um, give us a little insight about your thoughts on the coronavirus, the CV-19, COVID-19. What do you see going well, on here? I think it's, I think it's the perfect. Um, so all of a sudden what came into my mind was the, um, the tarot card. Uh, oh my goodness. I cannot believe I can't think of it. I want to go with strength, but that's not it. It's the white horse and the black horse. That's crazy. I cannot believe I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, uh, it's, it's like this balance, but it's a white horse and a black horse and you've got to keep them in a, in a, um, equilibrium so that you can move forward otherwise it gets chaotic and and the reason I even say horses because the first thing that came to me with this uh, coronavirus was I saw a horse like a, a Trojan horse of sorts um, that got brought in um, by the shadow aspects of self and then um, and then once it was recognized and seen there was a way to go and knock the rider off that horse and um, put the, a white hat rider on it and be able to, to ride it in and go ahead and play it out. So all of the darkness that was part of that dark horse, initial dark horse, could show itself and come up out of the darkness and be seen for everyone. Mm. Um, and then the white horse comes in and brings it all into wholeness but what for me it is um it's something that could be a whole lot of things for a lot of different people i think it's here to trigger within people um what they have inside that needs to come out and be seen i Simple agree as that. i agree i think that's huge yes yeah and uh you know is it is it deadly i think it is for those who B believe it to be I think you know we've got we've got a whole lot of stuff going on on the MS mainstream media that is it's just all you know it's it's a whole different play and and if people are bought into still giving their power away to that or even the subconsciousness of hearing it over and over and over and over again then whatever is going to play out is going to play out for the highest and best for all of us yes Absolutely. Uh, I see it all as being perfectly aligned mm -hmm. and um, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Most people now, I mean, I'm watching, it's like I'm, I'm taking the temperature and I'm watching how everything is sw sm switching, changing right. um, and uh, how the, the collective consciousness is shifting and changing through this and what it does immediately to the, the whole world stage. Mm -hmm. And things are shifting really, really fast. And it doesn't have to do with what's going on out there. It has to do with what's going on in here. That's and right. Collectively. That's right. And we are, it's amazing what projectors we are and wow. how we are going to see around us that which we choose to generate inside of us. And I think this is such a, a biofeedback mechanism for that awareness to be totally. woken up and, and to remember Breathe, smile, and love. Go into Absolutely. your own highest creation. Speaking of what creation, about you? What are you what feeling about, about all of this? Yeah. Uh -oh. First of all, I just want to say I love the painting behind you. I switched oh, my you. background because I wanted to kind of match it. Oh, I just I love realized. That. Yeah. <laughs> and um I and I thought, you know, in the traditional world, I couldn't switch my background because I already had one background, you know, but in this world, here we are, this beautiful mural behind you that you painted is just gorgeous. Thank you. I Thank love you it. Much. It's really, really lovely. So um, Judy is a mural painter besides, among other things, her great talents. And um, if anybody wanted to find you, could they find you on Facebook as Judy? Yeah. 
Judy Vance or Jandora, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. that's about that's about where I'm going to get. And, and my email is my name, Judy Jandora at Gmail. So okay. that's pretty simple. Judy Vance uh, Jandora at yeah Facebook on on Facebook, right? Cool. Exactly. Um, and I do I do share what's going on in uh, in the physical political world right now. Yes. According to Judy Jandora. Yeah. On um, on Twitter, but that's called Threshold Twenty Twenty. Not hard cool. to forget. <laughs> Not hard to forget. I had a Twitter um, account once and it got completely overloaded, and I've never been able to reclaim it. So I need to open a new one under another name. I just yeah, I just bothered. did it actually because oh. mine got shut down for some bizarre reason. I never used it hardly. And it's ever. called what Twenty Twenty. Threshold 2020. Threshold 2020. Ooh, baby. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. And I know I you have great it. insights. I love seeing your insights come across the pike. I'll tell you really quick what, and you do, you kind of do um, consultations for people if somebody wants. I, to I do. I do tarot yes. readings and that tends to bring out a lot of information uh, about the spirit experience that they brought, they're brought to me for and it's always you know it's never like people don't come for fun they come to explore what's going on in their reality and move into something different in a big way uh and then i do coaching um coaching sessions 30 30 minutes to an hour coaching sessions just to help people um retrain the way that they think and and take hold of their own um thoughts Take hold, you know, be able to use discernment, learn how to teach themselves how to do this. I'm not here for um, continually going on and on and on and on and on. I want to teach people so that they can be their own teacher Take responsibility and then teach others and then keep it going. Right. I'm not here for the money in this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> and you're really good. I know that. I love your astuteness. Let me jump in really quick to how I see the CV19. Um, it's interesting because I've learned in this life to kind of just watch and go, oh, look what's unfolding over here. Look what's unfolding over here. And then I have to go inside and say, is that unfolding over here because of me? You know, what inside of me um, do I need to change? You know, um, I'm a big freedom person. I don't like restriction of freedom. And um, so I'm watching people block things off and going, oh, my God, I can't believe we're doing this. It's just so many interesting conversations on so many levels, and I believe it's possible some people are dying of something, but I think the ways of um, evaluating it have been pretty jimmied um, by the system, by the news media, and um, and yeah. in, in fact, to think that the whole, the whole world, there was a really, really great um, interview with David Icke the other day that can be found on London Real dot tv where he actually goes through all of these different investigative journalism that he did that found out they basically if somebody comes in and dies of a heart attack they can say well they had these symptoms that are associated with you know that's all coming out in the open now right it is like which our, our yeah, attorney ahead. general's talking about it that what? people are seriously this cool. is fast now fast and and the numbers of deaths this year are less than the numbers of deaths this time last year. So it's funny. Yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with yeah, but it right. is but what is interesting to me is how caught up in fear people can be. And I think it really goes to fear of death. Um when truly disease can't live in a clean body. And when we are living when we are taking care of our our body properly when we're and the mind, and smiling, the the body, huge. and the mind. The mind is huge, absolutely. Mind more the body, almost over and above. The body and the mind both. Yeah. And so when we're living in a clean organism, and there's a science to that, which I'm teaching at 21st Century Superhuman, you teach awesome. in your life. There's many other kind of thought leaders out there who are teaching how do we clean ourselves up? How do we clean up our mind? How do we clean up our spirit? And again, this we've got this biofeedback mechanism reminding us to pay attention to things we haven't paid attention to. Now, people aren't going to work. Well, did I really want to go to that job every day? Or what do I really want to be doing with my life? What would I do if, so I think even things that happen for one reason can kind of backfire and can always bring forward good things. There's an old saying, 
you can't you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth and ultimately the light it. will rise ultimately the light will shine ultimately yes. the truth will will surface and when we're living these lives where we've suppressed who we really are we're being obedient little robots um at some point we have to wake up and i think this is one of those wake up calls it's one Big of those time. opportunities to um, i'm getting lots and lots of people calling who were fence sitters or just Trump haters <laughs> and, and calling and saying, okay, so talk to me some more and give me something to look at. And then they go out and they are voracious, voracious. They're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of that. I had somebody ranting at a post I put the other day about how, you know, the Trump, the U S gives, I don't know, a whole bunch of money to Israel for war and all this stuff. And I said, you're listening to the program news. And, you know, we just need to start paying attention to we're living in an old system that's maybe been running this way because we were baby humanity and we needed guidance and somebody set all these structures in place. But it's now time for us. We're growing beyond those structures. We're ready to be mature, grow up, be mature children be happy yes. children. <laughs> there you go um, whatever that means we're ready to grow into our own choices in our lives and i just i just encourage everybody to do that i think that's the most important thing that we can do and i think if this whatever this situation and circumstances are in your mind and surrounding you use it as an opportunity to wake up to who you really are and what you really want to be and do in your life because here that's how we change the world yeah, I think this is going to be interesting. I remember hearing before any of this started, but it was at the beginning of the year, and it was actually from someone who, who wasn't specifically, you know, a, a spiritual person, uh, but it was somebody that was, I, I, I don't remember who it was, but I remember hearing, hearing and, and it like just lighting up really big for me. At the end of 2020, you will not recognize who you were and what this world was at the beginning of 2020. Ooh, baby. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know how I know that that's true, but it's true. It's true. You will not recognize who you were at the beginning of 2020. Right. Rock on. Well, with yeah. that, let's call an end to this show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here with me. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's, it's great to, to get together with you and have these. I feel like we could do like three more shows on this and get into this and get into that. We could. Um, yes. But yeah, I appreciate this and, and um, I appreciate you for what you do and uh, what you give to this world. And, um, and I think that this is going to be an amazing, ama it's already an amazing time, but I think, yes. I think that what we're about to experience um, I think we've got a little bit more darkness, but it's going to go by quickly. And what we're about to experience will be something that we could never have imagined before. Absolutely. You know, in this embodiment anyway. So um, I'm looking forward to that and to maybe a talk, well, talking with you about that uh, yes. on the other side. Yes. And we'll talk between now and then too. I love our conversations. They're always stimulating and full of good, juicy stuff. Okay, so click subscribe under this channel, and if you click on the little bell, if you'd like to get notifications when our new videos come out, check us out at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com and share this video with some friends. Help build our community so the community among all of us can grow. And remember, breathe, smile, love and laugh <laughs> here we are we're here to change the world and we are not alone so we shall see you soon much love to all bye bye Ciao.
Come on, everyone, let's celebrate. We are the children of the sun. I can see you when I look into your eyes. We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one. Here now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along. We are awakening as one. And we can make a difference. Yeah, we can be the change it takes to make the world a lot more fun. Well, if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. Child, please don't frown You can choose a new vibration And these words can take you far I am a 21st century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Now, now, now is the time.